former Arizona Cardinals wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins is far too good for the teams that he is already on his visits with. We got that and much more on today's episode of Locked On NFL. You are Locked On NFL. Your daily NFL podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What is going on, football fans? And welcome into another episode of Locked On NFL, your daily podcast, bringing you all the biggest stories from around the National Football League every single Monday through Friday. We appreciate you for being here and joining us here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, making us your first listen of the day every day, of course. And today is Tuesday, so you've got your good friends. Luke Braun at Luke Braun NFL on Twitter. Myself, Ross Jackson at Ross Jackson Nola on Twitter. Very grateful to be here with you for another episode of Locked on NFL, which of course today is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. You can find them over at FanDuel.com slash Locked on to get started today. We'll tell you more about them a little bit later, but on today's episode, we're going to get to our likes of the week. No yikes this week. We're going to stay positive this week, Luke and I, uh, but we're going to also be taking a look at three big names in the NFL market right now. Danelle Hunter in the Minnesota Vikings. What's going on there and what's next for him? Uh, we'll take a look at Saquon Barkley, as well as a little bit of a look at the running back sort of value and position as a whole and get you caught up on everything that you need to know in regards to what happens if a player does miss mini camps and training camp and all that. But first, Luke, I want to start off with DeAndre Hopkins here. He's taken a visit so far with the Tennessee Titans in Nashville. He's got a visit coming up with the New England Patriots. And the bottom line for me, dude, is that He's too good to be signing with either one of those teams. That's just (laughs) really, really the way that I think about it. (laughs) Like he's too good for both of those teams. Like when you say that, is that a DeAndre Hopkins shouldn't do it? Is that it's not going to help them? Like where, where are you taking that? Yeah. So for me, it's DeAndre Hopkins shouldn't do it. DeAndre Hopkins should go to a place that is, a little bit more solidified where the team is a little bit more likely to compete because the Patriots are not that the Tennessee Titans are not that, but you think about it, think about it this way, right? Deandre Hopkins signs with the new England Patriots. Are they now all of a sudden beating the Buffalo bills? No, right. Deandre Hopkins signs with the Tennessee Titans Are the Tennessee Titans, all of a sudden favorites in the AFC. No, But you add DeAndre Hopkins to the Buffalo Bills. You add DeAndre Hopkins to the Kansas City Chiefs. Those are places where he can put those rosters over the top and actually do something for himself. To me, if he goes to Tennessee, if he goes to New England, he's not really in a much better situation in terms of a winning franchise than he was with the Arizona Cardinals. It's interesting. I hear you on Tennessee, and I think Tennessee is sort of backing off the gas a little bit, trying to build something a little bit more purposefully. Um, Mm -hmm. But with New England, they don't have the quarterback. And I think for that reason, you know, I'll never be able to pick them to, to win the division. DeAndre Hopkins or no. So I guess right. there's the answer to your question. But I do just want to point out that their defense is low key built to something real. Um, sure. And they could end up being the kind of team that only needs 21 points to win a game, you know? And mm-hmm. with DeAndre Hopkins, that that could do a lot. But I'm with you that it feels a little bit more like I don't want to see him waste away on a a random team that's going to get third place in its division and pick 10th overall. You know, I I want to see him go somewhere where we can finally see Deandre Hopkins truly in a playoff run. Um, whether that's Kansas city, uh, whether that's what are some of the other teams we were talking about before the show, Uh, Baltimore, Buffalo, Baltimore is interesting. Buffalo is interesting. Um, let me see Deandre Hopkins as part of one of those apparatuses. And agreed see what kind of noise he can make in January, deep in January, which is a place that DeAndre Hopkins typically has not been allowed to go. Right. And there's been some conversation too about him signing with the Cleveland Browns, or not signing with the Cleveland Browns, but like visiting with the Cleveland Browns, a potential Watson Hopkins reunion. Same goes, same thing that I'm saying about the Tennessee Titans and the New England Patriots. I feel about the Cleveland Browns. When I look at the idea of him potentially turning to Houston, I want to laugh. So for me, it's like I look at that would be the funniest outcome. That would be the funniest outcome. There's no (laughs) doubt about that. 
It would be hysterical. And I would be great for you know Cody and John over at Locked on Texas. They'd have a fantastic time with all that. But my goodness, would that not just that be the worst tough. decision? That was like that reminds me of like years ago when Gerald McCoy was uh, was the hot name in free agency, the defensive tackle. And he was like, Yeah, I want to go to a place that's gonna, you know, compete for a Super Bowl. I'm going to a Super Bowl team, all this and stuff. And then he signed with like five years ago version of the Carolina Panthers. And everyone was like, <laughs> What happened? What happened? <laughs> what, what was that? And so like, like that to me would be the them. equivalent. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so like I just I just want to see DeAndre Hopkins go to a place where like he is the difference and that difference means postseason play, not where like he can help erase, you know, some errors for your bad quarterback. I, I don't want that to be the case. And to me, like Cleveland, Tennessee, New England. Uh, those guys, they, they've got bad quarterbacks. So they have quarterbacks that need serious help. I'd rather see him end up in a place where he's partnering with an elite wide receiver like the Buffalo Bills situation, or he's got an right. elite quarterback like the, the Kansas City Chiefs situation. So that's the way that I look at it. Like I, I think he's too good right. to go to those other places. He needs to go somewhere that's going to kind of do like the the wide receiver version of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers signing Tom Brady, the wide receiver version of the Los Angeles Rams signing Matthew Stafford, like that's what I want to see for DeAndre Hopkins. And and it's tough when you if you go to a place that just doesn't have receiver talent and you become the only receiver talent, that's right. super easy to defend. Just double that guy and everybody else can't beat your corners. So you need to go to somewhere like Baltimore where they also have Odell Beckham or somewhere like Kansas City where they've got they've already presented challenges and you become an additional one. But I think. And this is no shade against DeAndre Hopkins. When you're an elite wide receiver and you're the only thing on the team, defenses know how to handle that. There are if yeah. you can sell out, if you can afford to sell out because nobody else is doing it, um, then you can pretty much ignore that. <laughs> but mm -hmm. if if you do end up somewhere in like in Buffalo, where man, we got to figure out how to deal with Stephon Diggs. Sorry, mm -hmm. whoever your cornerback is you got to deal with D hop today. That's where he can really make some noise. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And I think Deandre Hopkins, like I think Deandre Hopkins is good enough to, if he ends up with the right quarterback and he's the far and away clear, you know, option at wide receiver that it can work out. It takes me back to like my experience with that was Michael Thomas in 2019, right? Like he was the only weapon on the saints offense at wide receiver, but they had Alvin Kamara and they had Drew Brees throwing the football. So the right quarterback helped to make that what that was. And also uh, yeah, by the yeah. way, Teddy Bridgewater for five games, right? Teddy Bridgewater for five games and, as well, who was the and right that's quarterback. The, like the chiefs dynamic where they've got exactly you know, right. Yep. And they've got their, their people, but it's more, it's, it's the Patrick Mahomes show and, that's the threat, right? You go into that 100%. game as a defense going, how do we defend Patrick Mahomes? We have to dedicate a lot of resources to this. You kind of just have to hold up against DeAndre Hopkins. He needs to be in that situation. Yeah. Although I will say the Kansas city chiefs with not only Patrick Mahomes, but Andy Reed, and then having a wide receiver tandem of DeAndre Hopkins and Kadarius Tony that can get spicy really, really quickly really really quickly like i'd love to see that in kansas city so so that's my hope is that we see deandre hopkins not end up like some of the other veterans that we've seen in the past who said oh i want to end up on a super bowl roster and a team that's ready to compete and then sign with like one of the worst teams <laughs> in the league i'd you like to see him maybe avoid that fun, maybe the funniest one i can remember is jared oh. allen saying it was a retirement tour kind of he was old by then and he wanted to go ring chase and he ended yep. up on i believe it was the 2014 bears nice or 2013 nice. i can't remember one of those bears teams and i'm yeah. pretty sure that the like it can happen <laughs> it can happen man it can happen but we're hoping better for deandre hopkins don't settle deandre don't settle go get yourself a ring coming up, <laughs> coming up next speak to somebody that will not settle it's running back Saquon Barkley. He will not settle for a franchise tag, at least for now. So what's going on with Saquon Barkley and what could it mean for running backs himself and the Giants? We got that coming up for you mm -hmm. as we continue on with today's episode of Locked On NFL. Now, on a lot of the things that we speak on here on Locked On NFL, you can go bet on them at FanDuel True. Sportsbook. It's America's number one sportsbook for a reason. And that's because they got awesome promos going on all the time. So just go to FanDuel.com, FanDuel.com slash locked on if you haven't signed up. And you can get that no sweat first bet up to $2,500, $2,500 
in bonus bets back if you whiff on that first bet. 2500 bucks just for going to FanDuel.com slash locked on. Take advantage of some of those promos. Check back in every once in a while, too. They change. Um, the app is safe, secure, very easy to use, and they pay out instantly when you win. There is a reason that FanDuel is America's number one sportsbook. So go to FanDuel Sportsbook, FanDuel.com slash locked on. Get that no sweat first bet. FanDuel, make every moment more. All right, everybody, continuing on with today's episode of Locked on NFL. Thank you for joining us on this Tuesday episode. Luke Braun, Ross Jackson here with you. Appreciate you making us your first listen of the day every day. So, Luke, Saquon Barkley um, is the newest running back in the sort of news cycle around contract. Let's just call it contract stuff, contract di dispute, contract negotiations, whatever it is that we want to call it, contract stuff. And the running back contracts just get kind of more and more uh, devalued and 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 a, a couple of folks i think it was uh, uh q and chris kind of broke that down uh, on friday's episode a lot on nfl but from our perspective today what we want to take a look at is what does saquon barkley holding out of camp look like and of course this has a little bit of uh impact on you as well covering the vikings because right. you might see this with a player or two uh when it comes to the minnesota vikings Right, right. There are actually a couple of players that I don't know if we're going to see at mandatory minicamp. As we record this, I'm finding out we already know Daniel right. Hunter won't show, and there's a couple other people right. who would have a good reason not to show. Um, so the way it used to work, and I think the way that we think about holdout still, because this sort of the change to this quietly happened like the week that everything went into lockdown in 2020. So we all missed it. Yeah, yep. <laughs> it was because it was the new CBA that they got in like right under the gun. Um, but the way it used to work was you could hold out and you could say, I'm not going to play for you to give me a new contract. You would incur a whole bunch of fines for missing practices and missing uh, games, even possibly. And then as part of the contract negotiation, when you finally do agree to something, the team forgives all of those fines. So really, they, mm. they aren't really fining you. It's kind of you, you can you can hold out, you can get away with it and you can really like leverage it. Well, the NFL did not want that anymore. So they changed the system. And now. Mm -hmm. You're not allowed to forgive those fines. That's really big. And those fines add up very, very quickly. First day you miss, it's a five-digit number. The second day you miss, it's a bigger five-digit number. And it, and, it, and it adds up from there. But what really gets you, you miss a little bit of camp, that might be, you know, hey, $150,000 is fine in fines is okay if it means that you can eke an extra half a mil out of your contract negotiation. Now it was right. worth it, right? And that's the calculus I want people to be thinking of is how much money is Saquon Barkley if he does choose to hold out, which he said he, he hasn't like chosen or anything like that. That's a mm -hmm. that's a July decision for him. But should he yep. choose to, to hold out? Think about it as how much money is and, and none of the personal stuff, none of the how contentious is it and anything like that. Saquon Barkley will be fine. He does not need the warm ups and OTAs. Um, <laughs> right. But it's more how much money is he spending to hold out? How much money is he forfeiting versus the impact that that could have on the contract? And at a certain tipping point, that becomes worth it or not worth it. Um, the way it works is like after the first five days of camp, if you miss a sixth day of training camp, then you can actually start to be forced to forfeit other assets, roster bonuses, even signing bonus mm -hmm. proration. You know, usually the, the way if you get a, a, a big signing bonus, you get all that money up front or at least access to it. And then um, it gets prorated via the cap over the life of the contract. Well, whatever your salary cap charge is for your bonus, you might have to start giving that money back. And if you miss all of camp, you can <sighs> have to give up tricky. to a quarter of it back. That's where it gets yeah. tricky because that's there's a lot of money in that, especially if you've restructured your deal a lot. This is a huge deal for Daniel Hunter. Um, that could be, you know, a million and a half dollars. Now it might not be yeah. so worth it. Uh, if you start missing games, then you can you, you're missing out on game checks, and then you start giving you know another twenty. By by the t if you miss the whole year, you could actually give back your entire cap hit for that year, no matter what it is comprised of. Um, it can get really expensive really fast, and the team is not allowed to forgive that stuff. So. Right. It's a really tough to now again, it might be worth it. You you sit out five days, put a little pressure on, and then they give you that extra little bit you need to get over the top. That could do it. But if there's a ton of distance between the two sides for a player, a holdout might not be as good of an option. And what sucks for players is they don't really have another one. 
Yeah. Yeah, that does stink. And and so right now you're at a situation to where like I've seen some reports that say, you know, oh, Saquon Barkley hasn't rolled out sitting out the 2023 NFL season. Like I, I'm not putting any any stock into that because these guys want to play football. This isn't a Deshaun Watson situation to where you're staying away from football, staying out of the camera for in a year, hoping that all of your civil lawsuits will go away. This is a situation to where like the Saquon Barkley doesn't have anything to hide from. He's out there. He's ready to go and play. Like he's not going to sit out the 2023 season unless something super like dramatic happens. And if that happens, that's a failure on the New York Giants organization's part, not on Saquon Barkley's part, in my opinion. But when I look at Saquon Barkley, what he's saying right now is that, hey, look, I've gotten to what, July 17th to make that decision, which is true, because you look at him, you look at Josh Jacobs, neither of those guys have signed their franchise tags yet. You look at some of the other free agent running backs that are out there, like the free agent market is a volatile and weird market so far, and it's getting weirder and weirder uh, as everything goes along. But to me, like this feels like kind of like when we discussed Kyler Murray back when back last offseason, Luke, when we talked about the Arizona Cardinals, like if that's your best player, like do everything you can to hang on to your best player. Saquon Barkley is the New York Giants offense. I know Daniel Jones just got his contract. I know Daniel Jones is the quarterback, but Saquon Barkley was the guy for them last year. And one of the things that Saquon Barkley keeps saying is, I'm not really interested in resetting the market at my position or being the highest paid mm -hmm. player at my position. I just want to be paid respectfully for my contributions on the field and in the locker room. And that's really like, that's a, that's a point to where you go, you know what? I'm rooting for Saquon Barkley to get his dough. You know what I mean? Oh, like that, that's exactly the reason to get it done. Absolutely. And you know, with, with how devalued running backs have become over the last few mm -hmm. years, um, it might even be starting to overcorrect and right. You know who, or, or at the very least running backs themselves will hold that opinion. So yes, running backs are going to feel disrespected a lot. I think Dalvin cook is going through something similar. I think Ezekiel Elliott is going through something similar, but in an open market, um, yeah, that you're going to feel like, hey, I'm contributing to this team at least as much as everybody else is. I'm also the guy, you know, carrying the ball, making a lot of decisions. So why am I making as much as a punter makes? Yeah, that's <laughs> kind of fair. Yeah, I get it. I get it, man. <laughs> um, yeah, you're taking a lot more hits than a punter, too. I mean, goodness gracious. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, you're putting your body on the line and there's all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, does that translate to value on the salary cap and ROI? And we can have all those conversations. But at a personal level, I see where Saquon Barkley is coming from. Hey, man, I'm a I'm a locker room leader. I'm an important mm -hmm. part of this. You, you tell me all the time the offense runs through me. I, I'd be curious to see what kind of offers he's turned down. Maybe he has turned down something that's a little bit more of a market rate contract closer to the franchise tag, which for running backs is at like ten and a half million. Maybe mm -hmm. it's something closer to that. And Barkley wants more than that. And maybe we can say ah, that's probably unrealistic. Or maybe the Giants have come and said, yeah, we'll pay you six mil a year because you're a running back. And you go, well, that's disrespectful. And right. how much distance is there? Yeah. And look, sometimes it comes down to stuff outside of just the value of the contract, but how negotiations are being handled and things like that. I mean, you look at the current highest average per year deal. I believe it's still Christian McCaffrey sitting at $16 million. I don't blame any team for not wanting to pay their running back $17 million average per year, even though the guarantees are much less than that, right? Like the guarantees will end up coming down a little bit, but you know, you look at, um, you know, where he is right now sitting on just the franchise tag. And if he's hovering around 10 and a half million dollars, there's this big gap between Travis Etienne at $12.9 million and Jeff Wilson at $6 million. So he's somewhere in that nexus at the moment. And, you know, assuming he signs the franchise tag, clearly he would want to be, you know, up above some of those pieces and things like that. I mean, you look at where he could be in terms of average annual value, uh, Josh Jacobs right now, and he sit at it's $10.09 million. So that makes them right inside the okay. top 10 when it comes to all of it. Uh, so it's like right behind Aaron Jones, Joe Mixon, Nick Chubb. I mean, does Saquon Barkley deserve to be above those guys? I, I think he deserves to be a little bit further in the mix with those guys for sure. And that's we're talking yeah, 11 and a half and $12 million contracts. Yeah. And, and I think that that's more than fair. I don't, I don't, it, it's interesting. I'm very curious to know just how much distance there is right now, because mm -hmm. there is something to be said if you're close for making a big mess to just push that up over the top there. I think there's a, there's a strategy to right. that. There's an art to that. It can be purposeful and non-personal, you know, just yeah. 
doing business, right? Negotiate through the media. There's a skill to it. There's an art to it. Um, but if there's multiple millions, then it can get like legit messy. And yeah, then it gets a little more interesting. Yeah. Just feels like AAV wise, average annual value wise, it's not that much to get him into that top five portion of the category, that top four portion of the category at, at his position. And it wouldn't surprise me if the Giants yeah. get that done. And if they don't, I think it's a failure on their part. Yeah, it feels like there's a window where there's a good deal for both sides that you can find, but it depends on 100%. exactly what, what they might not agree on what our idea of, of a good deal is, you know? True, true. All right, coming up next, we're going to take a look at Danell Hunter and the Minnesota Vikings. Will he be a Minnesota Viking in 2023? And what is it exactly that he's looking for? The one and only Luke Braun, who has every one of those answers for 100% fact, is here to break it all down. We got that coming up for you as we continue on a wrap up today's episode of Locked on NFL. All right, everybody, wrapping up today's episode of Locked on NFL. Luke, where where did you just come from? You just came from the year what? Uh, 3,200. Humanity is over. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yikes. We didn't make it very far at all. Uh, uh, so much well, for the big Daniel experiment. Hunter, Eagle. Eagle. Oh, okay. Well, great. All right. Well, there we go. So that's what we know. All right. Well, so Daniel Hunter is going to be... You're going to be a Philadelphia Eagle, and that's it. That's today's show. Thanks, everybody. No, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> so the, okay. the Minnesota Vikings have had a lot going on. So why don't you tell us a little bit more? <laughs> yes, we, we discussed the Dalvin Cook stuff two weeks ago. Now let's let's get to the Danell Hunter goodness of all this. What's going on with him in the Minnesota Vikings? Yes. Yeah, I actually spoke a little bit with Kevin about this yesterday, too, uh, mm-hmm. on the Monday episode of, of Locked On NFL. Um, so basically, here's where the Vikings have been at. Quasi took over 2022. Rick Spielman had just been fired. If you listened to the sort of major narrative of the 2021 Vikings season, it was top heavy. They've got all these big contracts and then they didn't really have the depth. Sure enough, a couple guys get injured. They missed the playoffs. Um, the That's the situation that Quasi has inherited. And if you look mm-hmm. at each one of those individual situations and you go, okay, how are we getting out from under this contract, right? Well, okay. Adam Thielen looks like he's a 2023 release. Dalvin Cook, 2023 release. Um, and, and you kind of can go over Eric Kendricks. Well, you know, maybe he's a release, maybe he's a trade, but you can kind of go through each one of those moves and it st- starts to make sense. So that's where the Dalvin cook thing did. The Daniel Hunter one was always the most interesting one because he had a mm. huge roster bonus that was essentially signed on with the intention of becoming a signing bonus because then it kind of evened everything out to 12 or $13 million a year, which is an insane underpay that Daniel Hunter had no choice, yeah. but to sign. He was coming off of a of a neck injury. Her had a disc in his neck. Um, right. And and so he had no leverage at all to sign that contract. It had to be provisional. It had to be low money. And that money, the Vikings could have taken it away if he wasn't healthy. He, he was his his neck was fine. He ended up tearing his pec, missing a whole other season unrelated. Right. Um, so all right. of that negotiation has been working against Daniel Hunter. Well, now he finally had a healthy season, got double digit sacks, and he wants to get back to the table. That's where they're at right now. And there's, I think, distance mm. between the two sides in terms of the, the dollar amount. Personally, I think that's insane. I think the Vikings should pay him whatever he wants. He's been underpaid for a long time. But a lot of that's stuff Rick Spielman signed that Quasi de mm. is now trying to deal with. So that contract negotiation is ongoing. It is actively engaged. I can at least say that. Actively engaged in the mm-hmm. contract negotiation. But when you hear about a situation that isn't exactly perfect in terms of a negotiation, teams are going to come a call. And so now you get an Ian Rapp. Oh, yeah. That. Daniel Hunter is uh, teams are calling about Daniel Hunter, but the Vikings are not calling teams about Daniel Hunter. They're not shopping him. They're just receiving calls about teams that are reading the situation and thinking maybe there's an opportunity, but the understanding is that this is not going to be a, we're going to dump him in his contract for a fifth round pick kind of deal. Like it was with Zedarius Smith because his contract Mm -hmm. is almost all prorated bonus because of that Mm. big roster bonus situation. Mm -hmm. There's only 5 million in actual salary, which is kind of Daniel Hunter's issue. Um, and right. the rest of it is prorated signing bonus, $13 million cap hit 8 million of it is basically in that kind of untouchable form of money, unless he holds out like we just talked about. Yep. So Daniel Hunter is not going to come to mandatory mini camp. That makes sense for a guy mm-hmm. who's had injuries, disrupt contract negotiations a couple times now. Yeah, buddy, stay home personally. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> good point. But, but that has again sort of signaled to the rest of the league, hey, there's an issue here. So here come the calls, right? Mm-hmm. 
And I, yeah. I personally, I think a lot of teams would probably offer a second round pick. I don't think the Vikings are just going to dump them to whoever. Do- I, you got to do a first or better. And I know a lot of people, mm. a lot of the Locked On podcasts have had their episode of, yeah, you should, you know, our team look into Daniel Hunter. Yeah, you definitely should look into Daniel Hunter. He's a very good player, but you're probably going to have to be willing to to part ways with a first round pick. And honestly, I'll even say we probably won't do it unless we think that that first round pick is going to be in the top half. Because the Vikings Ooh, are looking for that's a, a quarterback. big price. Yeah, it is a big price. And the Vikings yeah. right now are looking for a way to ensure that they get their QB of the future. Kirk Cousins is 35. He ain't that guy. Yeah, Eventually, he's the future San Francisco 49er him. anyway. So don't worry about him. Precisely. Right. Yeah. Um, he's a Raider and then he's a Seattle Sea Dragon someday. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's going to do it. Uh, oh, when he, when he's too old. He can't play anymore. <laughs> I think I don't think he's going to be able to walk away. either that or he goes and runs for Michigan State Senate. Um, but w- whenever that day comes, when it's time to move on from Kirk Cousins, they're going to want to have that young guy in place. And that likely means they're going to be really mm-hmm. aggressive. They were really aggressive about trying to trade up in 2023 draft. It didn't materialize. They're going to try again in 2024 and they're going to want the ammo to do that. So don't give me a third round pick. Give me something I can actually flip into solving my QB situation. That is the only way for me to feel okay about losing Daniel Hunter and having a an edge rusher room that is, and you'll love this, Ross, Marcus Davenport and backups is all that would Woo! be Woo! Cooking! <laughs> Marcus Davenport and backups. DJ so Wallen, you've got at Patrick least Jones, you've got Marcus Davenport and nobody else who is even drafted. Like, wow. It's I mean, you've got at least a half sack there. At least a half sack there, right? (laughs) (laughs) Collectively, uh, (laughs) and Aiden Hutchinson before it was cool, Um, the which was disparaging to Aiden Hutchinson. Don't get me wrong, Uh, (laughs) but (laughs) but like if you want to, if you want the Vikings to willfully put themselves in that situation on the edge, then you have to essentially fund our. QB search. If we'll get into mm. that situation, we'll take that hit if it means we get our QB, right? Like functionally, practically, that is a trade that we'll take. Um, but that probably means you're giving us a first and maybe change. And I don't see any teams really coming up that hard. I think a lot of teams are gonna call and say, Hey, would you do it for a second? And the Vikings will go, We need a lot more than that. And you go, Okay, where's their call? Cool. Yeah, made the call, did the thing, checked in, worked on trying to make the team better, didn't work out, and then they'll move right on from there. Yeah. That makes and maybe sense. somebody so, this is the, this is really similar to the Stefan Diggs situation a few years ago. And then sure enough, the yeah. Bills came in and had a godfather offer. <laughs> the Vikings right. were like, okay, well, we can't say no to a first and like three other picks. All right, we did it. And yeah, turned it in Justin Jefferson, everything worked out. So th- maybe somebody comes in and says, No, we actually like, really want this guy. Let's do it. Uh, but personally, I don't see that happening, kind of because of the same reasons that the contract is weird in the first place. He's had some injuries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No team's going to want to give up that first round pick for the same reason that the Minnesota Vikings haven't gotten the contract done. Like that makes that makes perfect sense. Um, so we're looking at this as in Danelle Hunter, most likely, most likely plays 2023 NFL football as a Minnesota Viking. Yes. I think he's more likely to hold out and not play at all than he is oh. to be traded. I really do. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, that makes sense. Because I, I I see the Vikings trying to find a solution here. Somewhere in the world, there is a solution where the Vikings get all the Daniel Hunter play that they want with the flexibility that they always want in these deals. But Daniel Hunter still feels like he's finally getting paid because he has not yeah. been paid his whole career. Uh, he has been underpaid. And some of that's on yeah. him and his agent. Some of that's on the Vikings, you know, really kind of taking advantage of of certain leverages and, and, and market depressors. But it's mm-hmm. time for Daniel Hunter to get paid. It's It's been long time coming for for daniel hunter to get the money that he's worth yeah. if you want to keep up with the latest on what's going on with the new hunter obviously luke braun at locked on vikings is the place to be luke as we wrap up today ready to our like of the week we're not gonna worry about yike this week maybe we could say yike to the running back market maybe we can say yike to deandre hopkins potentially choosing the houston texans those are our yikes for the week but the likes for this week what do you got uh, I'm loving the throwback u- uniform thing that's going on right now. You got yeah. Seattle unveils theirs. The the Bucks are going back to the creamsicles. I really appreciate when a franchise is keen on reminding its fan base of its worst times. Really going back to the dark ages. Like, hey guys, remember that time we lost 26 games in a row when we opened up as a team? This is what we looked like then. 
I love it. <laughs> yeah, you, it could always be worse. It could always be worse. <laughs> right. That's a that's can a really really friendly Seahawks. reminder. Can you name three Seahawks who played in those uniforms? <laughs> I <can't>. God no. <laughs> I think technically Walter God, Jones. No. Maybe yeah uniform. yeah exactly. I think he started. They were still in that. You could say Goodness. Jerry Rice, but that feels like cheating. That's cheating. Yeah, 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 for sure. Oh, I love that. All right. Well, uh, my like for this week is is not is is uniform related in that it's it's logos and and we spoke about this uh, a couple weeks ago. But the Cleveland Browns have not only selected their new logo, but they selected the correct logo. They made the right choice. Absolutely. This was the one that you and I really liked, Luke, to where you kind of have like the the darker shade on one side. It's very dog noir. Uh, Cleveland Brown, it's Cleveland noir. noir, if you will. Yeah, yeah, like it's you know, film Easter noir. Eggs. You got the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but so they're subtle. I'm, uh, it's not like the one that's like that, like hides the letters really bad in all of them. It's like yes, you know, you've got like an overhead, like the dog collar is actually an overhead of the stadium, and I think you've got uh, mm-hmm. a lake in there or something. Like there's there's motivation behind all of it. They've, yeah, there's... the dog collar has eight spikes for their eight championships. Yep. It's really good stuff. So I'm a big fan of the uh, the choice there by the Cleveland Browns. All right, y'all. We very much appreciate you for making Locked on NFL a part of your day and a part of your routine and making us your first listen of the day every day. Don't forget to come and check back in tomorrow. James and Tony will be here to get you all caught up with everything that you need to know around the NFL. Maybe we get some more Buddha Baker news. I know he's talking about, you know, he had requested trade a while back, but he's still hanging around for many cans. Maybe we'll learn more about Danell Hunter. Maybe learn more about Dalvin Cook. There's a lot of uh, things to keep an eye out on all around the NFL because, yeah, it might be the off season, but quote unquote, quote, there's no off season. So we got that coming up for you every single day here throughout the Locked on NFL podcast. For Luke Braun at Luke Braun NFL on Twitter, I am Ross Jackson at Ross Jackson. Nola, thanks again for being here with us. Locked on NFL, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.